Lisa Oz, how are you? I am great, thanks. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you so much for stopping by South Georgia today. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. Well, it looks like you are having fun with you and your husband, Dr. Oz. Uh, you were on Fox and Friends not too long ago, just uh, doing the media circuit. You guys are having a lot of fun with your uh, new book here. Well, I always have fun when I'm with my husband. He uh, he is my, my, my favorite form of fun. But yes, um, we're actually having a great time with the book. We had a great time putting the book together, too, because I love to cook and he loves to eat. So he was a great <laughs> guinea pig for all the recipes. Um, but it, it's been a real pleasure working with him. Do you have to hide the the uh, German chocolate cake uh, from him? It seems like he really, really likes that recipe. It is his favorite food, and he's actually very good about not eating it except for once a year. I make it for him for his birthday. Now, with the book tour, we have made it a couple times, as you saw yesterday. And so he will use that as an excuse to eat actually wow. extra of it. He had a piece yesterday. A whole piece. He had a bite or two on the air, and then we went back to the dressing room, and he finished <laughs> the whole piece. But normally he actually eats really healthfully. Um, but an indulgence now and then is not going to and not going to kill anybody. And that's part of the reason I wrote the book, was just to let people know that they, they could eat healthfully and it could still be fun and delicious and not, you know, restrictive. Last-minute meals. It sounds like someone like you and your husband, you guys are very busy. You live a very busy lifestyle. Um, how do you plan and make time to make meals and to make it right? Because I think there's a lot of people out there that do a lot of last-minute stuff and make bad decisions with food. Well, it, it does take planning. That's the thing. When you when you do something on impulse, you're not always going to make the best choices. So if you think about it ahead of time, there are things you can do that will make good choices easier. What I like to do is prepare things on Sunday when everybody's home and they can help me chop, but then stick them in the freezer. So even if it's not the whole recipe, putting something like brown rice takes a little more time than white rice, but you can put it in a, in a, on the stove, cook it on a Sunday, and then freeze it, and you'll have it right away when you want it um, during the week, and you don't have a lot of time to prepare a meal. So it takes a little bit of planning to eat more healthfully, but it's really doable and not impossible, and always better than making a choice that you're going to regret that's not going to feed you or your family. Holidays are just around the corner. You know, we have Halloween not too far away and then Thanksgiving. So uh, I'm assuming that you guys are preparing for that as far as getting pumpkins and whatnot. What are some of the treats that you like to do around this time of the year? Well, our favorite thing to do is to go pumpkin picking, apple picking and pumpkin picking. And then we make, my, my husband will carve the jack-o'-lanterns with the kids. And we'll also have friends from the neighborhood over and everybody carves these jack-o'-lanterns, and when they carve them, we have tons of this in, the inside flesh of the pumpkins. So we, I make pumpkin pies, and we also toast up those pumpkin the seeds on the inside, which are amazing and delicious. Um, so this time of year, it's all about pumpkin pies and apple pies and um, celebrating the harvest, so to speak. But we love to do to go from picking to cooking. Um, and and enjoying the process as a family. You do a lot with uh, different types of seeds, which is interesting. You just mentioned pumpkin seeds, but what are some of the seeds that uh, you use a lot in different recipes? What are some of your favorite? Well, seeds are wonderful, and they add they can add crunch and they can add flavor. Um, I use uh, pumpkin seeds, as I mentioned, also um, sesame seeds. Nigella seeds are my favorite, and a, a lot of people haven't heard of them. They're this uh, Middle Eastern seasoning um, with cumin, along with cumin seeds, which I use um, in some of the dishes. And they're, if you can't get them at your local grocery store because everyone doesn't carry them, you can absolutely get them on Amazon. That's where I buy them. Uh, so there's nothing in here that you can't get uh, pretty easily. But all of those, like the nigella seeds, the pumpkin seeds, the sesame seeds, uh, and the cumin seeds add a wonderful flavor to dishes that are is a little bit unexpected and a little different from what you may normally be eating. And it just makes – I have an acorn squash recipe, for example, pretty normal, except that you have these seeds all over it, and it just takes it to another dimension. The name of your book, The Oz Family Kitchen, and a, a big part of that book is your family. You have a lot of different pictures of you and your family. How has food brought your family together? Well, it, meal times are the time that we spend together as a family, and I think that's true for most people. Um, there, we all lead such busy lives in the 21st century. You, you have multiple jobs and kids in school and doing after, after school activities, and, and nobody's just hanging out at home except during meal times. Everybody's got to eat. 
So we spend time as a family both preparing meals because I make the kids help me uh, and when we eat. And I, and I think it's a, a real – and we don't have cell phones at the table. Nobody's allowed to be doing multitasking. So it's a time when we connect and we talk and we find out what's going on in each other's lives. So it's, it's a really Im- important part of our family dynamic. I'm going through a couple of your recipes, and I'm one of these low-carb people. I'm always looking for low-carb different recipes, and I, one caught my eye, uh, Philly fried eggs with onions and roasted peppers. That looks awesome. Awesome. That sounds awesome. What was the inspiration behind that recipe? So our on our first date, Mehmet took me to a cheesesteak <laughs> restaurant in Philadelphia, uh, knowing that I was a vegetarian, but not quite understanding what a vegetarian ate. Uh, so I, <laughs> that was sort of an homage to the Philly cheesesteak uh, uh, history that we have. Um, and I just substitute in that recipe recipe um, a fried egg for steak. So as, as a vegetarian, um, I'm not vegan. I do eat eggs. So it's the same fried peppers and, well, you know, the, the peppers and onions, a little bit of cheese and the fried egg uh, on a baguette. So it, it tastes like a Philly cheesesteak, but without the steak. There's one um, in the book that really just kind of caught my eye. Uh, I hope I don't mess this up here, Lisa, if I, if I say it way too fast here, but arugula, goat cheese, pomegranate salad sounds very, very interesting. Well, it's, arugula is my favorite green. It's a little bit bitter, but not too bitter. Uh, and it's actually, well, you throw a handful of arugula into any salad and it really brightens it. And pomegranates just have a nice crunch and a sweetness that, uh, that you know, helps the salad out. I, I'm all for the co- combining of flavors. I love to have a little sweetness, a little salty, a little heat. I think it's in Thai cooking where they want to have all of the flavors together in each dish for a perfect dish. And, and I like that philosophy. I, I like to balance out a dish. And this one, I think, does it nicely. My seven-year-old um, does not like anything green, but she loves carrots. And I noticed there's a couple of recipes in your book on uh, what you do with the uh, carrots. I guess the question I have for you is, how do you get kids to eat and experiment new things? Has that ever been a challenge for you? It was when the kids were little. But, you know, with kids, it takes 12 exposures for them to actually start liking something. So you don't want to give up right away. And I'm certainly, I don't think it's a, a good idea um, to let kids choose exactly what they're going to eat. One, it makes you, as the chef in the house, as, you know, as the mom or dad who's cooking, become a, a short-order cook. You're, you're only making up food that your kid desires at that moment. Um, so it, it sends your world into a tizzy, but it's also not good for the kids. So I would always make what I was making, and then the kids could choose to eat it or not. And honestly, if they skipped a meal because they didn't want to eat, that was their choice. Um, they all came around. And um, they, it, I think our taste buds, in a large part, are a matter of what we're exposed to. And so if you're exposing your kids early on to lots of healthy vegetables and whole foods, that is what they will grow up liking. If you're giving them grilled cheese and macaroni uh, early on, that's unfortunately what they're going to want as they get older, too. We, tr- we train our taste buds. As we look ahead uh, towards Thanksgiving, are there some uh, must-see recipes here or that you can point out that people need to check out if, if you're going to plan a Thanksgiving meal? Well, for Thanksgiving, I would recommend there is a turkey recipe in there if you're a turkey eater, and most Americans are turkey eaters for Thanksgiving. If you're not a turkey eater, there's a lentil loaf in there that's great. And you could do both for a family that's blended like ours, you know, where our our uh, omnivores and vegetarians in our family, so we do both of those. Um, we also have a um, pumpkin pie for dessert and a delicious roasted root vegetable that is one of our favorites. We'll, we do that all fall long. It's not reserved for Thanksgiving, but it's a, a great Thanksgiving side. Before I let you go here, Lisa, what are some of the things that we can look forward to as uh, far as different appearances and different things that you guys are doing out in the media? Well, this afternoon I am taping the Rachel Ray Show, so that will be airing next week on the 23rd, so you can check me out there if you're interested. All right, sounds good. Lisa Oz, we sure appreciate you stopping by South Georgia. The Oz Family Cookbook, it's a must-have, especially when we get closer to the holidays here. Thank you so much for having me.